The Ministry of Health has relaxed quarantine restrictions for COVID-19 patients. The Ministry has reduced the mandatory quarantine days from 14 to 10, uh, whereas the symptomatic cases will be discharged after 10 days if uh, on one does not show any symptoms of COVID-19. Health Minister Dr. Jane Nurissa Cheng said that any person admitted in a health facility after testing positive for COVID-19 will be retested after 10 days, and if they, are, they test positive, will be quarantined for only 10 more days and if otherwise will be discharged. A COVID-19 test will no longer be required for discharge of symptomatic patients or patients with mild and moderate COVID-19 infections. Rather, a time and symptom-based criteria will be used whereby individuals with COVID-19 who do not require oxygen may be discharged at least 10 days after symptom onset provided their symptoms have improved and they are at least 24 hours fever free. Two, asymptomatic patients may be discharged or de-isolated 10 days after the date of the initial positive COVID-19 test if they have no symptoms at all. And this will also apply to those that are under form isolation. Chiang has that the burial of a dead body related to COVID-19 will now be attended to by only 70 people, but under strict observation of the standard operating procedures. The Speaker of Parliament, Rebecca Rituara Kadaga, has directed Parliament's Committee on Legal and Parliamentary Affairs and the Budget Committee to take interest in the insufficient funds provided to the Judicial Service Commission to recruit judicial officers. Kadaga, while opening this afternoon's parliamentary sitting, noted that she had a meeting with the Judicial Service Commission and they complained about the insufficient funds that were provided to them in the budget, which has left them unable to recruit staff. Kadaga said, that the Commission currently has 420 positions with no judicial officers and magistrates saying this is going to make it hard for Ugandans to access justice. At the moment, there are now 420 positions where there are no officers. There are districts, no magistrates, and uh, their request is that during uh, the new budget cycle, the government considers providing sufficient funds to enable them to improve on the recruitment and the numbers so that more people can have access to justice. Kampala Lord Mayor Ayasu Kogo's supporters have clashed with the police as they struggle to access the premises where their candidate was to be nominated for the same seat in the 2021 general elections. The scaffold started after the police denied Lukwago's seconders access to the nomination venue, exchanging blows between Lukwago's supporters and police, saying the move was planned to block their candidate. After a while, the situation normalized and Lukwago's nominated thereafter, condemned the police brutality and force used on his supporters. What has happened today as we are coming here, we are very peaceful. And, but the people feel, I mean, police kept on showering tear gas for no good reason. So uh, he condemned police and they owe us an apology for their disruptive conduct on their way because this is a day that was gazetted for us to come here. This is an exercise which is national in nature. So I remain the shield for the people to come back. I remain the shield for Ugandans to guard your assets generously. Everyone else knows it even in the institution that Rukwago is that is such a strong pillar in this particular cause. So I promise to continue with that. Among other candidates nominated today for the seat for the Lord Mayor is artist Jose Kamelin and the National Unity Platform's Nabila Nagai. Uh, relatedly, Kampala Woman Member of Parliament Nabila Nagai Sempala has today been nominated by the Electoral Commission to contest in the Lord Mayor race in the, on the NUP ticket. Nabila, who was clad in NUP colors, arrived at the Electoral Commission offices in Intinda in the afternoon, accompanied by her supporters who were stopped by police from accessing the Commission offices. Speaking to the media shortly after, Nabila said she has come to work for the people of Kampala especially the women, but not to fight with others at City Hall. I'm going to exactly implement what a mayor, what a Lord Mayor should be. A Lord Mayor is the focal point, is the coordinator of the side of politics and the side of the technical side. 
In other news, France's top civil court has ruled that Rwandan genocide suspect Felicia Kabuga can be handed over to a United Nations tribunal in Tanzania for trial. Mr. Kabuga was arrested in May at his home outside Paris after 26 years on the run. Once one of Rwanda's richest men, Mr. Kabuga is accused of financing the 1994 genocide. He is alleged to have backed an armed ethnic Hutu militia who slaughtered about 800,000 ethnic Tutsis and moderate Hutus. He set up the notorious RTLM, a Rwandan broadcaster that actively encouraged uh, people to search out and kill ethnic Tutsis. In 1997, he was indicted by the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, based in the northern Tanzanian town of Arusha, on seven counts, including genocide and crimes against humanity. He denies all the charges, describing the accusations as lies during a court appearance in May. In entertainment news, Kevin Hart's model wife, Eniko, has given birth. Eniko, 36, announced the arrival of daughter Kaori Mai on Instagram on Wednesday and called her a little bit of heaven sent to earth. Little Kaori was born the day before the post and Eniko wrote, thankful, grateful, blessed, a little bit of heaven sent down to earth. Welcome to the world, baby girl. We couldn't love you more, Kaori Mai Hart. Eniko and Kevin have been married for four years and have son Kenzo Cash too who revealed baby K's gender on Mother's Day. The comedian has been married previously sharing two children, daughter Heaven 15, son Hendrix 12 with his ex-wife of eight years Tore Hart. That was the news. It's the news.